Hi, this is Mike Botts, Project Manager for Open Sensor Hub. Most of the time we're talking to you about our open source software development happening on the server or services side of things. After all, the main focus of Open Sensor Hub is to create sensor hubs that can easily be deployed and connected to sensors. These enable one to discover, task, and get observations from a variety of sensors and actuators. However, today I want to present Open Sensor Hub develop, development that is taking place on the client or user application side of things. So we've been developing an open source JavaScript library that will make it easy for you to create applications which are capable of discovering and accessing Open Sensor Hub services, requesting detailed descriptions of the deployed sensors, tasking that sensor if possible, and retrieving real-time or archived observations from these services. These applications are equally able to support interaction with both real-time streaming data and archive data being streamed in playback mode. So let's look at some of the features that are currently available in the Open Sensor Hub Client Toolkit. The first thing to notice is that you'll be able to display sensor locations using any standard map layers available in Open Layers, Leaflet, or Cesium 3D libraries. In fact, if available from the sensor, you can also display orientations using, in this case, icons that provide a direction of camera view. The second thing to notice is that you'll be able to have multiple windows providing a wide range of functionalities from displaying videos and images to providing plots or tasking interface. These different windows might be associated with controlling the host scene or an individual sensor. All of these capabilities and more are configurable for your application. In this particular application, you can see that we have included a tree that displays various sensors as entities in a, in a tree structure. By clicking on one of these tree entities, you'll be able to highlight all the components associated with that item. You can also click on the icon, thereby again highlighting all the components associated with that sensor. The base class is, of course, can be changed to any map layer available through standard web services. Here we have selected a satellite image map provided by Esri that helps us make more sense of the geospatial area of this exercise. In this particular application configuration, newly opened windows are pinned along the right side of the display. There are several things that you can do to control these windows. By clicking on the pin icon on the title bar, you can unpin the, the window, allowing you to move the window wherever you like. Clicking that pin icon again will result in, rem in moving the window back to the docking area on the right. You can open a new window by clicking on the icon or tree item and selecting show video in this case. So again, you can unpin that window, move it to a new location, and enlarge it by pulling on the, the lower right corner. You can also disconnect that window from its associated data stream and then, and then reconnect. On reconnect, the data will remain synchronized with the master time. Furthermore, you can swap the view in the window with the background map layer and switch it back. By clicking on an icon or a tree item, you can pop up a menu that allows you to, in this case, view the color video stream or a FLIR a thermal imagery video or both. Same with the 3D solo drone that we will be showing you later. You can request the video stream or select a time series graph showing the drone's altitude. One can configure these menus to provide whatever functionality they desire, including perhaps description of the sensor system or report on the sensor status. It's important that data streams from the different sensor systems remain synchronized. We've been working to meet this challenge, challenging requirement by developing advanced capabilities on both the server and client side. Here you can observe the truck being driven over across the field and at the same time the motion of the body cams and a dash cam within that vehicle. You may have noticed that the deployed video sensors in this exercise include several varieties. These include a, a Nexus 5 Android phone being worn as a body cam, two Garmin verbs, one being used as a body cam and the other as a drop cam, and several geocams, which are Raspberry, Raspberry Pi based devices providing HD video, location, and orientation. And based on video from both the geocam and the Nexus 5 body cam, 
you can see that one of the occupants leaves the vehicle. He then walks over to deploy a sensor on a post using one of several mounting adapters that are available for Garmin and GoPro devices. The Open Sensor Hub field node in this case has been configured to support rapid deployment of sensors in the field. Therefore, for as soon as the sensor is turned on, it begins to stream its data to the local Open Sensor Hub field node, and then the data is immediately available for viewing in the client. Another feature that you may have noticed is the ability to change the master time for the scene. By clicking on the lower right icon on the time bar, you can enter an edit mode which allows you to move the slider to your desired time. Uh, after a moment, all the data requests are updated to the new time and synchronization is reestablished. During this time, we have launched a 3DR solo drone as indicated by the drone icon. The drone not only indicates location but also view orientation using the blue cone. We can now enable the drone's video window as well as unpin, move, and enlarge it. Furthermore, we can enable the time series of the drone's altitude. So there you have a view of the start of a free and open source software toolkit for creating web-based applications for Open Sensor Hub. Come and put it to use or help us develop it. Uh, we're very happy to welcome you into the Open Sensor Hub community. Thanks.